today I have something really special to show off to you guys. Today we are talking about Indian coffee and we're also showing off the Sophie 72 from our friends at uh, RMSA. So I'm here with Kaveri Coffee. This is Tanya Rao and uh, yeah, we're gonna talk about Indian coffee. That's exciting. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. So I definitely want to bring up the conversation about Indian coffees because I, at least as a coffee enthusiast, rarely, if not never, like we never drink Indian coffee. Mm -hmm. And I think that at least Indian specialty coffee is uh, on the come up. There's so much to unpack. And I really just want someone who has really great knowledge, who is an expert in Indian coffee, Tanya here, to tell us a bit about it. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Tanya Rao, and I'm a coffee roaster uh, based in Berkeley, California. And I'm a third generation coffee roaster. My grandfather and father were coffee roasters and traders in India, and I'm uh, bringing the family's coffee legacy and traditions here to the Bay Area and beyond. Mm. Um, my company is called Kaveri Coffee, and I specialize primarily in coffee from India, sourcing high quality coffee from different regions, um, coffee growing regions in India, and uh, basically highlighting uh, characters that are unique um, to the origin or also just unique to that farm um, and showcasing that to coffee drinkers here. I really like it if we could just you know share a bit about the history of Indian Absolutely. coffee. Absolutely, I'll give yeah. you the full history yeah. lesson. Um, so there is a story and legend that goes the, that India Coffee was introduced to India in the mid 1600s uh, when a Sufi saint from who was living in South India went to Mecca on a pilgrimage, and then he, you know, came across um, coffee in in um, Mocha, the port of Mocha mm -hmm. in Yemen, um, and smuggled seven beans to India, and he planted it on the foothills of the mountains. The name of the Sufi saint is Baba Budan, and the mountains where he planted the coffee beans and is known now as the birthplace of Indian coffee is called ba Baba Budan Giri. Uh, Giri just means a mountain range, um, and most of Indian coffee is grown in the southwestern mountain range of um, southern India, mm. also known as the Western Ghats. Okay. Um, so mid 70s is when it's believed that the first plants of coffee were um, grown in India. And then during a British colonization, somewhere in the mid 1800s was when uh, coffee was cultivated as a commercial crop. Mm -hmm. And the British kind of spread the areas where coffee was grown and also um, kind of built the coffee trade mm -hmm. as part of their um, colonial trade. So uh, a large part of um, southern India is where coffee grows and people in South India are more traditionally the coffee drinkers mm -hmm. um, of, of India. Um, and then in more recent years, um, the specialty coffee scene in India has been growing. Um, I think the idea of specialty coffee has been around um, in India for like the last 15 to 20 years, um, but in the last five years, it's kind of grown exponentially mm -hmm. with the growth of a lot of specialty coffee roasters, kind of honing in on the craft of coffee roasting and um, showcasing different brewing methods and so on. Mm -hmm. um, and also with the, the farms and the producers, um, understanding that specialty coffee, you know, brings a higher, a higher price mm -hmm. and, and focusing their processing methods to cater to the specialty mm -hmm. coffee industry. But in general, about 80% of the coffee grown in India is exported. Mm -hmm. um, and what India Indian coffee is known for is um, for having really like mild to medium acidity and really good body. Mm -hmm. um, and these are all coffees in India are grown in like a natural forest environment uh, with two to three tiers of shade um, and they're intercropped with other uh, plants such as spices and fruit plants. So all of this adds to the flavor of the co mm. coffee, creates like a really rich um, biodiversity uh, and growing condition. So rich soil that in turn lends to the complex and rich flavors of mm. Indian coffee. That right there is a ton of history. I mean, <laughs> this is uh, just a very unique 
part of the world that coffee exists in. I just feel like we, at least as enthusiasts, like we I, we ra rarely, rarely see uh, Indian coffees even picked up by uh, some of these American roasters. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's incredibly rare. I mean, the, the last time, aside from these coffees, that I had Indian coffees was um, uh, in Canada. There was like Hatch, Nemesis. They did like a, span a, f a fancy box mm -hmm. and, and it was like, that was the last time I had it. And, and you rarely, rarely see Indian coffees break into this like specialty higher end tier of coffee. Uh, right. do, you, do you know why that might be? Um, yeah, I think Indian coffee in general has a, a marketing and, and a branding and like an image problem. <laughs> it's uh, typically been packaged as um, kind of clubbed into these different processing methods. Like most people who know that coffee grows in India, the only coffee that they have either heard of or even tasted is the monsoon Malabar. Right. Uh, and monsoon Malabar is a processing method that is unique to India. And hence, I feel like it's marketed as something special mm. but uh in my experience, uh, I think the Monsoon Malabar has certain qualities that can be a complement to um, the, the specialty coffee interests um, and, and different kind of like blends. But stand alone, uh, I personally don't find it to be that um, tasty or, mm. you know, uh, flavorful. Um, and but but that's what most people know as Indian right. coffee. So there is this perception for those that don't um, have monsoon Malabar coffee in the way it that showcases its best qualities. You know, will come away thinking, oh, coffee from India doesn't taste that great. Right. Also because of one of the unique characteristics being good body, which means that um, Indian coffees can be roasted um, kind of, you know, to a darker uh, spectrum of roasting um, and still hold on to a lot of different characteristics of flavor without, you know, kind of burning off all the flavors. So it's often used in blends, like espresso blends. Monsoon Malabar actually is an excellent, like, espresso coffee. Yeah. Um, and other, like, in general, you know, Indian coffee is thrown into blends because it adds that adds one quality of, of um, an espresso, uh, you know, coffee that right. most people are looking for. And they're always like, okay, Indian coffee fulfills that role. So right. this is how, and it's been, you know, a, a little oversight. I feel like that is the only way it's perceived and presented. Right. You can't find these flavor profiles in other coffees. There is something incredibly unique about them. And I think as coffee enthusiasts, it's very important to try all these different uh, coffees from all these varying regions. And, you know, one of the main things that even as someone who is an enthusiast, it's like, you know, you, did you even know that coffee grew in India, right? Like, yeah. th these are types of things that um, I think there's just a, a lot to be worked on, uh, really in the, per the perception and, and presentation of Indian coffee. So it's really important that we have uh, people like Tanya actually presenting that, at least uh, to us, and making this coffee uh, much more accessible. I just <laughs> wanted to add, you know, there are uh, coffee roasters, specialty coffee roasters that have, sh like you mentioned, Hatch, you know, have showcased Indian coffee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's few and far between. And so right. I think the more people understand, learn about, and taste Indian coffee, um, the, the more uh, opportunity there is for people to uh, have mm -hmm. access to that coffee. Right here, if you yeah. can see it. So this is a map of India. And if you look at the big um, overall map, uh, it's color coded in two different uh, colors. There's a darker orange and a lighter orange. So these three states um, in the southwestern region of India are the traditional coffee growing regions um, and currently grows about 90 percent of the coffee produced in India. Okay. And then these lighter areas are newer coffee growing regions. This northeastern area is popular for its teas, mm -hmm. but it has the altitude and the climate that is also conducive for coffee growing. Uh -huh. And so they're becoming newer and more popular regions. Mm -hmm. um, this state, Karnataka, is my home state, uh, and it grows 70% of the coffee grown in India. So if you see the, the uh, zoom in of the map here, this mountain range is called the Baba Bundangiri mountain range, okay. which um, where is it where, started. where yeah. it all started. And then oh, it propagated, yeah, kind of down the the mountain range. Um, there's a whole mountain range here called the Western Ghats, and it gets um, 
monsoon rains in in sort of like the early fall, our summer to early fall is the monsoon season mm. in uh, southwestern India. Um, so the elevation here is um, coffee is grown at anywhere between 900 meters to about 1600 mm. meters. Um, and these higher mountain ranges uh, are where Arabica coffee is right. grown. Uh, India produces about 50 50 percent uh, Arabica and 50% Robusta. Okay. And uh, even the Robustas in India are known to be of higher quality mm. than any Robusta you'll find um, in other parts of the world. Because the coffee is grown in here, in this in this area, uh, we actually have a brewing method that right. has been developed, which is called the South Indian Filter. There is this brewer that has been passed down between generations and generations, right. and everyone's brewer is very like family specific. They're yeah. all a little bit different, um, and every family has like their go-to recipe like the, mm -hmm. this is how my family does it and if right. you don't do it that way it's not good right like there are so many different ways absolutely to do it, but let's talk about that yeah yeah um so it isn't clear when this brewer was um designed or when it came onto the scene um but a in South Indian households, and even within South India, there's a subset of people that actually uh, drink coffee. Because mm -hmm. um, again, in the days of British colonization, um, tea was very cheap. Um, they brought in instant coffee that was also very cheap and affordable. Mm -hmm. So there were only like a small subset of um, the like up middle to upper class mm -hmm. folks that could afford to buy coffee. Um, and so uh, this was the method that was uh, kind of you know, designed yeah. and passed down generation to generation. Nobody really knows the origin, but it's known as the, uh, it's just known simply as the filter. Mm -hmm. And then the coffee you brew with it is known as filter coffee. Mm -hmm. And we tag on the South Indian because it is so unique to Southern India. Not many people outside of that region know about this brewing method. Mm -hmm. The brewer is a two chamber brewer and the top chamber has um, holes at the bottom. And so you put um, fine ground coffee in the top chamber and you pour hot water in the top and that slowly drips down to the bottom and mm -hmm. then the coffee concentrate, which is called decoction, collects at the bottom. And then you mix that coffee concentrate with milk, sugar, and enjoy. Mm -hmm. And that's known as just filter coffee. And this brewer, yes, as uh, you mentioned, it's just been passed on from generation to generation. Now you can even find it in, uh, you know, plenty Indian stores. Um, and they come in all shapes and sizes. Here are a few. Um, yeah, there are a, to a lot of these. <laughs> uh, the two ones that we have here are the RMSA ones. But as you see, there are just so many different uh, versions of it. And the hole patterns, the shapes and sizes of the actual brew chamber, all of that is just different among right. all of these. Oh, one part that I forgot to mention so we can kind of examine this is in the top chamber, There, it also comes with a stamper or a plunger as it's called. Um, so it basically helps to uh, keep the coffee grounds compact mm -hmm. and then distribute the water more evenly so that there's even extraction. Yeah. Um, but of course, you know, back then the, we did not know the science of brewing and extraction. And so there was just this one method that people followed and mm. would pass down as recipes. Let's kind of start off with just doing a really traditional filter recipe, which is, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of how Tanya's family or how, what, like the recipe that you grew up with? Like, yeah. Yeah, let's absolutely. go ahead and do that. Sure. This is my medium light bright, uh, medium roast balanced, and then a fuller bodied bolt, um, medium dark roast. Typically when you brew with uh, the Indian filter, it's recommended to do a medium dark roast because uh, as I mentioned, the filter coffee, the resulting brew is mixed with milk. And so you want the coffee to be able to shine through milk. So this is my uh, bold medium dark roast, which is from Badnekan Estate. And that grows um, in the high mountains of Baba Budangiri. So we're gonna start by doing 26 grams of coffee. And this is gonna be ground fine, almost like espresso fine. It's pretty fine. 
and here we have it in the top chamber and we distribute it kind of creating an even bed um, this is in lieu of the the plunger in, which is in a traditional used in a traditional filter and this is sort of modernizing a traditional way of brewing um, I find the plunger to be uh, it compacts it a little too much and um, it Kind of increases the brewing time which in turn um, over extracts the coffee yeah. and lends itself to some bitter notes. So we're applying a little bit of modern techniques into here but we're still going to enjoy it uh, the traditional way. That's right. Okay that's good. So you're it's about, about 198. Mm -hmm. Kind of the initial pour. So you poured swirl 62 it. grams and you swirling it. Yeah. Okay. Kind of getting all the grounds wet. Kind of do a little bit of a vigorous swirl. And I'm going for almost like a one is to six mm -hmm. um, ratio of water to coffee. So one final swirl and then close it. It takes about anywhere between eight to 10 minutes to drip to the bottom. And we have, um, you know, this is a stainless steel um, device, so it can get pretty hot. And we have a band that you can, uh, a silicone band to help kind of keep your finger safe uh, when, <laughs> when trying to <laughs> brew and swirl. So this device was engineered by um, the couple at RMC, um, and the idea is to have a more consistent brewer, because as we were talking about all these different family brewers and you know different brewing devices, each of them um, have a different pattern of holes at the bottom, mm -hmm. so, um, so it's never sure. And hence, you know, if you go to somebody's house and they brew you a cup of coffee, it's gonna taste different, not just because of their brew recipe, but also because of their brewer. <laughs> <laughs> so our um, idea here is to have a more consistent brewer and a more versatile brewer so you can brew coffee of different you know strengths um, and styles in this in this traditional Indian filter. Traditionally the woman of the household, the first person to get up in the house, the first thing she does in the kitchen is to set the coffee to brew. Um, and while it is brewing, she goes and gets stuff ready for breakfast. Um, and uh, with the plunger in place, sometimes the brewing uh, time takes closer to like 15 to 20 minutes. Um, nobody really keeps track because you just get it, set it up and then you go do other stuff. So while this is brewing, uh, we will go get our milk ready for uh, the, the final filter coffee beverage. Typically, um, the coffee that brews in that filter is a concentrate. It's a kind of like a espresso strength concentrate, and uh, you mix it with milk. Uh, again, one of the the brew recipes or ratios is a one is to two ratio. So for one part coffee, you have two parts milk. In comparison to an espresso beverage where you steam the milk, mm -hmm. this one is you boil the milk. So in the process of boiling, you're uh, burning off and caramelizing some sugars that lends its own flavor to the coffee. Um, and Indians in general like their you know, hot beverages with milk and sugar, similar to chai. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the coffee version of it. Um, we put some sugar, um, not while it's boiling, but once it's boiled. Okay. And then uh, these little containers, this is known as a tumbler and a davra. Boiling milk and hot coffee decoction, when mixed, creates a really hot beverage. And so you use these two um, devices to cool the coffee and create uh, this natural foam and um, froth that kind of makes it the whole experience enjoyable. There's all the co uh, water has drained down and you have kind of an even bed and it's still dripping. So we'll create that. There we go. Yeah. Wow. 
And then this looks thick. Yep. So this concentrate is what we're going to be mixing in with the milk. As I mentioned, the ratio is a, a one is to two. So I have two parts of milk boiling in there and I'm gonna do one part Oops. coffee concentrate. And yes, you can see how thick and yeah, concentrated wow. that is. <laughs> Take a sip of that, Brian. This is something that is very unique to this brewing method. It's because we're grinding so fine, we're doing a very short ratio, mm -hmm. and because we're actually getting a fairly even extraction, mm -hmm. uh, it actually should taste really good, but we get this high TES uh, style of brew. You know, despite it's called filter, there's no actual paper filter in this uh, at all. all. Right. This kind of creates a really interesting cup, which actually does have some sort of grittiness to it at times, but mm -hmm. I actually think it's quite enjoyable. You get so much uh, body to this. Like there is, it's smooth mm -hmm. though, but like a lot of body. Right. It is a little gritty because mm -hmm. there, it's not paper filtered at all. It's not as like punchy necessarily as an espresso, but right. it is that high concentration uh, style of brew. Yeah. Because the um, brew time is so long, it goes over eight minutes, right? Mm. So different components in the coffee are getting extracted at different temperatures. Mm. So you're going to get a more like complex um, resulting uh, concentrate than in an espresso, which is a quick extraction. We typically let it kind of boil to the top and the trick is to be watching it and to turn it off just before it boils over <laughs> <laughs> wow. so now you've got this really like caramelized milk and we'll bring it over here okay so we I'm going to add the coffee concentrate And then you've got a very hot cup of coffee. Wow, look at that. There we go. We can add sugar if you, if people prefer. So in terms of um, strength, this is, uh, I would call it a similar to like a latte. It's a more milkier coffee mm -hmm. than say, you know, like a cappuccino or so. So you can um, cater how strong you want the coffee to be based on how much um, milk to coffee concentrate or decoction ratio. Mm -hmm. And of course, this is a very hot cup of coffee. So what people like to do is pour a little in here and you kind of let it cool and you pour it back and you kind of go back and forth until it reaches an optimal temperature mm. for sipping and enjoying. Visually, this is a very aesthetic, very appealing uh, looking drink. And as with wow. any um, coffee experience, it's the smell that first kind of initiates your coffee experience. And so most people just love to enjoy the aroma. Wow. And that's a mix of coffee as well as, mm. you know, milk, yeah. caramelized milk. Super sweet. Like it just yeah. smells like sugar. It's right. so sweet. Yeah. Wow. Really smooth. I mean, this mm -hmm. is really interesting because this was milk that uh, wasn't steamed at all. Right. Like there's no aeration, aeration here. The, the decoction that we started with yeah. was already uh, so smooth that right. you're tasting both of those and they complement really, really well right. in here. So yeah. this is really tasty. And the process of People who enjoy um, coffee with sugar, you know, will usually um, put a little sugar in here and you kind of go back and forth. Um, oh, to like mix it all in. To mix it all it. in mm -hmm. and also to create that aeration. Yeah. Now, see, my dad would say this is not the right color of brown because <laughs> that's, again, it, you would know if it was the perfect recipe if it had the right shade of brown. So this is... <laughs> according to my dad, would be a lighter coffee. Uh -huh. um, so I did not follow my mother's recipe here. <laughs> and you can taste that, um, the, the, the aeration with this too, when yeah. we go back and forth. 
um, as we aerate. Because there's milk in this, you also get those bubbles uh, on your tongue when you when you sip this. Yeah. So it's like a very smooth uh, and sweet tasting drink mm -hmm. and we didn't even add any sugar into this right exactly like, that's yeah that's kind of awesome yeah. i think that is also um a combination of the kind of coffee we used mm -hmm. uh and and the the brewing method as well um as i mentioned you know typically it, for this brewer uh, you use like a medium dark to a darker roast mm -hmm. the darker you go there's going to be more bitterness and mm -hmm. hence the need for sugar um but also i like to roast my coffees in a way that kind of hits that sweet spot where it is developed enough so that it's a fuller bodied coffee mm. but not to the extent where it starts to burn off those sugars and yeah. get that bitterness. Mm -hmm. The concentrate that we drank earlier uh, without the milk just like, doesn't taste charcoal or ash. There's no like mm -hmm. dark roastedness, roastiness right. about it at all, despite yeah. um, it being a more developed roast, which is right. awesome because what in this drink I'm tasting right now. It's just so well structured. Like everything is pairing really well together. Nice. This is great. Yeah. So this is how uh, a lot of people in India yep. would drink coffee, coffee. this mm -hmm. way. This way. Yeah. 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 And this is just simply known as filter coffee. Mm -hmm. Not a very uh, creative name, but yeah, but it's really good. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Making too. sure it's really, really brown. It's actually, yeah, it should be really oh, okay. kind of so people like it uh, s stronger? That's a personal preference. Oh, uh, okay. So in my family, like my dad, liked it strong. Um, and, you know, until it was a certain shade of brown. So my mom wasn't a coffee drinker. She uh, preferred tea. And my dad was the coffee drinker. And when I was about 9 or 10 years old, my mom taught me how to make filter coffee mm -hmm. um, to suit my dad's preference. Uh, and it was like, okay, you keep adding the decoction until you hit that, you know, that shade of brown. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, you've got, you know, the perfect cup. Yeah. So on, on this one, the uh, coffee really shines through here, mm -hmm. um, but you're just getting, you know, it was brewed really well and the right. coffee is good. So it's just more and more of that coming through and the milk is complementing uh, that. So yeah. versus a more like balanced drink, this is more coffee forward. Of course, yeah. very personal preference dependent. Personal preference, yeah. absolutely, yeah. For fun, we're gonna try some say. Wow, okay, this is a, this is some light, light roast coffee here. Ooh. I'm excited. Um, but there's definitely some kind of, I would say stigma associated mm -hmm. with these brewers and also just Indian coffee in general, which is the, the roast level. And, and I think this would be something worthwhile real quick discussing. Though. Absolutely, yeah. Again, because it's um, um, a concentrated brew and it's typically paired with milk, um, it's most often lends itself towards a darker roast that helps, you know, shine through uh, that milk and cuts through milk. Mm -hmm. But um, what I enjoy and what uh, the folks at Aramse also enjoy is using the, the brewer to brew different mm -hmm. roasts of coffee, different styles of coffee, and, and seeing what flavors come through. Mm -hmm. and um, enjoying it as black coffee than right. uh, always having to mix it with milk. Yeah, so that's actually what you can do with this brewer is you can actually use some of these lighter roast coffees and like the brewer is not the limiter in mm -hmm. this factor. Like it's, it, it's really not the limit because it's just a pre different presentation right. of the coffee. And I think this is what makes coffee brewing very, very fun. If you look at the bottom here, it yeah. should have 72 holes in this uh, pattern. And this is promoting a more like even flow rate and even mm -hmm. extraction. Uh, but if we look at some of these other ones, it is, they're all different. Everything's all different. different. So like some of these have different hole patterns. And there is no, um, brand or style like this one's completely yeah this one's different. got like not as many holes we got like bigger holes and it gets more um, like circular sparse as as you go out and this, this one's one, is completely <laughs> like we, like the holes are just random. ran randomly stamped and the idea and especially the the motivation for aramse um to have this be a consistent and reliable um brewer 
for you know taking this this history and tradition of uh, Indian coffee brewing, but make it more uh, consistent, mm-hmm. reliable, and versatile for today's specialty coffee market is kind of their idea behind designing this. And I'm super excited to partner with them. Mm-hmm. Um, we started talking back in 2019 when they were getting started with their business and I was getting started um, with my business and just getting excited over what are the ways that we can take this history, rich history and culture mm-hmm. of Indian coffee and bring it to the masses in a way that's um, interesting. Everyone loves, you know, history and culture, but it also needs to be relevant for today's times right. and for today's, you know, practice and uh, passion of coffee. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's the really, really cool thing with uh, the Sophie 72 is the fact that we have this traditional brewing device and style of coffee that can be adapted to the modern age. And one neat um, design trick of this is when you uh, pick up the top chamber, you can kind of place it in the lid and it kind of creates its own standalone (laughs) stand. (laughs) And here you go. We've got another concentrated. Mm -hmm. But this time with uh, some say, but it's... This is like really the type of drink that folks who like the the strength and style of espresso but hate crema, this is like the drink that's for you guys. You get the acidity, but you get the body. Yes. Like this is something that is really amazing with this style of brewing. Right. Often Mm. when you think of light roasts, you think lighter body, Mm. and this is definitely not a lighter body. Yeah, like the the tea-like body that a lot of these lighter roast coffees are associated with, uh, this can compensate for that because obviously we're brewing like one to six, right? We're brewing high concentration, Mm -hmm. but it's high concentration that is very enjoyable. You know, I can go into all these different stores and buy a V60, I can buy a Mm -hmm. Kalita, right? Like it's the same everywhere where I go. Uh, The shape and geometry is all the same, so my brew is gonna be the same. Right. But I can't do that with Indian coffee brewers. It's all different, right? Wherever you're going. So this is great because it is consistent. So Mm -hmm. people across the board can be having a similar cup to you. We're excited to be the first um, stockist uh, in the US Mm -hmm. for their Aramse's Sophie 72. We will have the Sophie 72 um, that you can purchase standalone on our website or pair it with one of our coffees to have that traditional cultural experience of Indian coffee brewed in an Indian filter. You know, I'm really happy to know someone like Tanya here who can uh, be an expert and show us everything about Indian coffee. Uh, So I really, really urge you guys to try out some of her coffees. Um, These are just going to be some of the most unique coffees you have ever tasted. It's a different style. And I think in the world of coffee, trying new things is so important. And also trying new brewing methods is also so important. Please check her website out at uh, coveraycoffee.com. That's right. And go and order some coffee. No, thank you, Brian, for having me and for sharing, um, I mean, for being curious about Indian coffee and sharing it with a wider audience. It's uh, really exciting for me, given my history and background and always, you know, growing up in an Indian coffee family, uh, I was like, of course, coffee grows in India. And of course, Indian coffee is good. But, you know, encountering people over here, um, coming from, you know, different uh, backgrounds and also different perspectives. um, It's been a really fun journey for me to share the Indian coffee history, my story, and um, just present the beautiful coffee that grows in India. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but otherwise, thank you so much for spending the time to watch this video. Please check out Kaveri Coffee, all of their socials and all that should be on the screen. Go to the website, pick up some of their coffee, and also follow our friends at RMC. So yeah, thank you guys so much. We'll see you guys around. Thank you. So I just wanted to add this in here, uh, just because we've been talking about brewing and all of that, is uh, actually trying out some of Tanya's coffees. So for just kind of the details are gonna be on the screen here somewhere, we're gonna do a quick 10% discount on all of the coffees, just because I think you guys really should try this out here. Um, It's incredibly unique. Indian coffees have such a just different profile than what you might be used to. Um, But yeah, I just wanted to add in here because I really want you guys to try out Tanya's coffees. Thank you, Brian.